One of the questions I get asked a lot is how do I edit my photos or what can I use to edit my photos? And the number one answer that I usually give people is Lightroom or Photoshop. Those are the two staples of what I use to edit my photos. But a lot of people may just be getting into photography and they may not want to purchase the Photoshop license or the Lightroom license. Um, I think the cheapest or most cost effective um, avenue if you go down the Photoshop route is to get the photographer's bundle which is nine dollars a month for Lightroom and Photoshop but if you don't want to pay that there may be a new solution that will help you edit your raw photos from your camera and that's from a company called Topaz so just this week Topaz released their Topaz Studio in beta and it's actually a free download right now they have both windows and mac so you'll download the um the os that you use and once you install it this is kind of what it looks like it's similar to i want to say similar to like a lightroom camera raw layout and what it allows you to do is go through and edit your photos for color and things like that i don't think that you can do cloning and things of that nature that you would do in Photoshop but if you think of this as kind of a Lightroom replacement and it actually it, from what I've seen it it has some pretty cool features that I'll walk through really fast with you so this is a photo that I briefly retouched while I was um, messing around with the software I just downloaded it so I don't know all the ins and outs but I wanted to share with you some things that I learned and some things that you might find useful. So um, up here in the top, if we click on this, it has a before and after. So you can see some of the changes that I did. And you can change the view. You can also click and see what your original is versus the retouch. And then over here is basically everything that I did to the photo. So if you think about this in similar to Photoshop where you have layers that build upon each other and then the thing that this has that's pretty cool is it has different options to mask within each of those adjustments. So let me click on this shot here. This is one that I haven't done anything with and I'll kind of take you through how this works. So I guess to start you can click on the basic and then this gives you similar to the adjustments that you'll see in Photoshop or Camera Raw. You have adjusting the exposure, clarity, shadows, temperature, all of that stuff. What this has that's cool is you can click on this button here and you can apply a mask to this. So if you wanted to take the exposure down and increase the saturation to change the sky, but as you can see here, it's affecting the whole image, you can click on something like the gradient. And over here you can see your mask. So it's similar to Photoshop. So the black is hiding, the white is not. So right now, this is affecting the bottom and not the top, so we want to invert that. So now if you go back to this, the eyeball, you can see what we just did. So we made the sky um, darker and we increased the saturation. And then the other cool thing that this has is, let's go in here and make a little bit more dramatic so we can really see what this does. So if you get to this point and you're like, hmm, maybe I went a little bit too far, you can actually just come back to this and lower the opacity. So then let's say we want to affect the contrast of the image. And they actually have some pretty cool built-in um, settings. So, I mean, right out of the box, that made a pretty big 
change to the image there. I mean, it added a lot of a lot of structure and clarity, but it, it did it in a kind of really cool manner. But maybe that's too much for what you're looking for. So again, you can just go in here and you can just bring that back. So then it's a subtle change instead of instead of it being at 100%, you bring it back to 50% and instead of looking way over the top, it looks more normal, but it accentuates the photo. So then you can go through some more and they have different, just some different options. If you have one that you don't like, you can just hit delete. So same thing, tone or tone curve. So this is basically the same as what you see in Photoshop with curves. So if we go into here, let's make a mask and let's brush this one. So if we make the radius bigger, we can make the soft, we can make it softer. The other cool thing that this has is edge aware. So what that does is as you're painting, it will mask out only what you paint over. So let me paint on here really fast. We're going to make this ground a little bit darker. So then you see here, you see the mask and you can see how it cut the car out pretty clean. So in here on the corner on the back valence, it didn't give me that full strength. It only gave, um, it gave a little bit. So it, kind of cut around the car a little bit better. And then again, we just want to invert that because black is gonna, black is not gonna let this adjustment through, white is gonna show. And then what we want to do is just pull this down and then we can darken down that ground. And then again, if it's too much or not enough, you know, you can go back in if it's not enough, jack that up a little bit more. Or if it's too much, you can bring it back down. Um, D, let's see. So if we want to go into basic again, let's make another mask. Uh, we can do a spot mask. So we can make this a little bit bigger than the car. And let's say we want to give this, again, we want to invert this. Let's say we want to bring up the exposure on the car just a little bit. And we can also add some clarity. And then over here, I found that they have some, I guess, kind of presets built in. So if you want to do a vignette, you can go and You can target where the center of the vignette is going to be. So we want to kind of put it on that back, back bumper, I believe, maybe. And then we can make the strength of that vignette just to bring the focus in. And then again, if you want to more or less so you can toggle to see before and afters. And then if we click on more again, if we had some noise, you can go in and remove the noise. And then you go in and let's sharpen it. Just raise up the strength a little bit. And if you want, you can come up here you can zoom in and see what's going on. And that's kind of a cool feature if you hold down the space bar. And then once you're done, you just save as, and then you can save it as a JPEG. I think if you're looking for, at least right now, I don't know if the plan is to keep this for free, but for the time being, 
I mean, go check it out. I'll put the um, download link in the description below and uh, give it a shot. I think you'll, I think you'll like what they've done with the software. It's um, pretty intuitive if you've used Lightroom or Camera Raw from Photoshop. Um, a lot of the tools are the same. A lot of the ways the tools function are very similar. Um, but you have some cool things that you don't necessarily have in those tools like the um, precision contrast control with those presets or you can even go in there and mess around yourself. And then the other good thing that this has is with the basic adjustments how you can build on top of each other and lower those opacities back without going in and adjusting all of the points. So. I think it's going to be a pretty powerful tool and like I said if you're looking for a free editor right now while they're in beta test mode I mean go give it a look so hopefully this helps you hopefully you uh, you like this software and um, and if you have any questions leave them below in the comments and I'll uh, I'll try to answer them as best as I can like I said I'm I just downloaded this like a couple hours ago and was playing around with it so I don't know all the ins and outs yet but I think that's the fun, right, is learning something new. So until next time, take care.